three minute rounds between in the red corner we're in the blue trunks from Gloucester Johnny Melfer and in the blue corner we're in the red trunks from Cardiff Wayne Ellis at the weigh in today Melfer scaled 11 stone 10 and a half pounds Ellis 11 stone, 9 pounds. Your officials for this contest, the timekeeper, Mr. Gordon Pate, the referee, Mr. Winford Jones. Sean Heron at super middle and um, with, with a couple of extra pounds on him he, he looks a much more solid fighter than he did than he, than he was at middleweight Jim yeah he's, it's always the case when a fighter moves up the division they're pulling to do the weight a little bit but they, they look that more robust and, and solid and rounded and Johnny Melford seems to carry the weight comfortably well the win over Sean Heron stopped a run of four consecutive defeats for Johnny Malfa. There's a typical case of um, from Melford's point of view, he's coming to the to the den of your light, he's coming to Ellis's backyard here in Wales, and he'll be looking to show what the game's all about to Mr. Ellis. He's fought for the championship and Ellis and no doubt has got title aspirations himself. And maybe Johnny be a good yardstick for him to guide himself by. Uh, let's not forget Melford's a dangerous bang on that right hand. Oh, cracking jab from Elizabeth. Uh, really chirped Melford's head back. coming up. Yeah, I think that was an injury he carried into the ring with him, actually, Dave. But the Fran look on the face of Wayne Ellis, he's full of, got his mind on the job totally, concentrating 100%, which is nice to see from a young prospect. And rightly so against the sort of um, dangerous old campaigner that Johnny Milford has turned out to be. And he proved in the upset victory in his last contest. Tactics from Melfi, he's keeping a nice compact tight guard, not being erratic with anything he's doing, sticking to the basics but doing them well. And for me he shaded the opening session. Yeah, not a lot of choose between the two boys this opening session. Melfi's I agree with you, Jim. I think I think Melfi's done enough. I'm glad you didn't sit on the fence, mate, that's my line. Well it's our first view on Pro Box. Of Wayne Ellis, I've got to confess, I haven't, I haven't seen him in action before. What are your first impressions, Jim? Absolutely, my first impressions. I'm impressed from the the concentration side of things. How he's gone about the opening session against a willy old campaigner in Johnny Melfi. He hasn't fought for the crowd. He's, he's thought about what he's going to do. He's basically just had a little look at Johnny Melfi. He's moved around side to side, just kept himself nice and calm. And I'm sure we'll see him slipping through the gears as the rounds go by. And I'm looking forward to seeing what he can produce. Well, here is Johnny Melfer. 
has been used in his past fights as uh, a bit of a trial horse against the likes of Chris Eubank and, and Slugger O'Toole. And I guess that was the thought when he went in with Sean Heron, but uh, he pulled something out that night. It's a bit Jenny Melfer earlier, and he said that in the Sean Heron case, it was a typical case of a fighter coming into the ring, believing the victory was already his through the Alpine Bella gun. You know, overconfidence can be fit as undoing, and Johnny Melfer thinks to think that was the case with the Sean Heron contest. Yeah, from Wayne Ellis's point of view, this is a real good yardstick to judge himself by. He's, he's sharing the ring with a man who's been in with Harold Bomber Graham, Chris Eubank, the reigning world champion, Slugger O'Toole, to name but three. Oh, the left eye of Melfer has gone. He's complaining to Winford Jones bitterly that it was a fight. Playing instantly to the referee, but I don't think he's going to be able to go on, is he? He's letting him go on, but oh boy, that'll do well to go. That'll do well to go eight rounds. Well, the risk giving the benefit of the doubt, but against the sharp and eager Wayne Ellis, this can be very, very difficult to see out the course. That's that's bad luck on Johnny Melfort. Yeah, very much so. I'm looking forward to watching this fight develop. It's a good right hand that time now. I doubt whether this is going to go much longer than a round, and Melvin knows he's got to pull something out the back. He's going to have to stop him. I'll tell you what, Ellis is going to have to keep tight as well because Melford is desperate now and he's just going to go for the big one with sure. every shot. He knows he's on borrowed time. And Ellis uh, being a little careless with a head. No, no question the cut was caused by a head. Good exchange of shots. Uh, it's all over. And Melfa is heartbroken. It's a, it's a perfectly correct decision by the referee. I can, I can understand Johnny Melfa's total frustration. And I think Wayne Ellis can count himself just a wee bit lucky there. Yeah, I'd have to agree. I think that was going to turn into an absorbing contest. Melfa looked really fired up and was determined to get another win on, in the winning column for him. But no question that Winford Jones absolutely spot on in his decision to stop the fight. It was a bad cut, and it would have uh, got a lot worse had it continued. Yeah, definitely. Good and decision from the referee. Melba having sustained a bad cut to the above the left eye. The winner, Wayne Ellis. And I can still say so to Dave, but we haven't really seen Wayne Ellis in action to share. Well, I'll reserve I'll reserve judgment on that, Jimmy. I'll uh, I'll wait till. Uh, He's given a good test by someone, but uh, nevertheless he keeps his unbeaten record, so that's what matters, and good luck to him. You're unbeaten, you must be doing something right, and that's another win for Wayne Ellis.